What was your GPA? Yeah, so this is a good question, and it's interesting because um, in undergrad, I rarely ever shared my GPA, and I think that kind of speaks to the differences between undergrad and, and um in graduate professional school, because in undergrad there was this kind of unspoken competition between people, and when you told someone your GPA, it could, you know, change their perspective on you. They might look for you to to help, to get some extra help, or um, you know, if they're competing against you, then it kind of it just was an uncomfortable experience at times. But I think you know, definitely in in graduate or in PA school. Um, that isn't there. No one even asks you what you got on a test. It's kind of, are you happy with what you got? Which is, I kind of really like, because I think that's what's important. Um, but so my GPA, um, my cumulative GPA of all four years of kinesiology was a 3.64. And um, I was, personally, I was aiming for a higher GPA. I, I would have liked a higher GPA, but in the end of the day, I think it's reflective of kind of who I am in terms of I know why I got that GPA. So in first year, first year was my worst year, as most people have that experience. And that's just because I was getting used to it and kind of I was more excited by the university experience than I was about grades, which is natural, I hope. Um, and so that was my worst year. The second year, everything flipped, and it was my best year academically, um, which was surprising, but it, I was really happy with it. But I was basically just head down, nose, face, in books all the time. And it, it worked out academically, but I was, felt like I was missing something. I kind of was, my excitement level or my like content or happiness was kind of just stagnant. It, was, it wasn't really much happening in my life. I was just kind of focusing a lot. And I've kind of realized that I need a balance. Even though I got great marks, I still need that balance in my life where I kind of go crazy. So... In third year, I got super involved and kind of went a little bit too far past the spectrum and kind of spread myself thin on a lot of different responsibilities and roles, um, and that ended up bringing my GPA back down. Um, and I kind of, again, it was another learning experience to learn kind of who I am and what I can handle. And, you know, having a lot of roles and responsibilities is good, but if you can't do them all effectively, then it's not worth it. It's better to do you know, two things, do them really well, than do five things and do them all below average. So I realized that. And so in the fourth year, I kind of cut back a little and found an, a happy balance between everything. And it was also very, an existential year of trying to figure out who I am uh, as a human. And so my kind of trajectory of, P, of GPA kind of went from like, low in first year to high in second year and then a little bit lower here in third and then fourth year is like about here. So that all kind of 3.64. Yeah. And were your study methods more uh, rote memorization or did you have a certain way to help you improve your grades? Yeah, that's another thing that kind of you have to go through to, to learn about yourself. Um, but also learn that every class kind of requires a different study method or study technique. So in first year we had anatomies and we had physiologies and that requires a little bit more road memorization, knowing just what bone is this is, what bone is this, you know, what are the stages of embryology or um, you know, fetus formation, like just memorizing those and then spitting them back out on a multiple choice exam. Um, th that is a lot of just being able to recognize material and then and circling it. So in first year, it was a lot of memorization um, because everything was multiple choice. And then as you progress through the years, at least in kinesiology and probably in other programs, the classes get smaller and the tests get a little bit more short answer based. So that requires a different type of studying because it requires a different type of understanding. It's not um, recognition anymore, now it's recall. So with the recall, you have to be able to also remember the information, but also communicate the information on paper. And I think that requires more just understanding the material, but also practicing the material. And I think that's probably one of the best pieces of advice that I could give for, for studying is practicing. I think you can read a textbook 10 times versus reading it twice and then trying to explain it to your friend or, or write it down on a piece of paper, like on a blank piece of paper. I think that's more effective because it activates, it, it kind of 
sees if you have those you know, neural connections, if you've made those memories or not. And if you haven't, you'll work hard to try to remember it, and that's just strengthening your memory. So, again, like advice for you know, getting a, a good GPA or trying to, like, to move ahead, it's very subjective. Everyone has different weaknesses, everyone has different strengths. Um, some people have a great memory and can easily memorize you know, 10 terms, and some people need to look at it 100 times to remember it. So it, it depends on you. You have to look, you have to experiment with what works, but I think um, practicing is never a bad idea. Um, you know, a couple days, uh, two days before the test, just take an empty piece of paper, and then write everything that you know about one topic and see what you're missing, see what you got wrong, and then refine it from there. Um, yeah, I use that for certain courses that required short answer questions, and I saw a drastic improvement in my mark. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you went from one extreme to another when it comes to time, time management, mm -hmm. like extracurriculars versus um, hardcore studying. Yes. So what is the balance for you now? Like what would a typical day or week of studying look like for you? The balance is something that I think we will forever work on. I don't think anyone finds it perfect and like maintains it. Because even when you find the balance, you still have to work to maintain the balance. Um, but for me, I am mostly studying um, a lot. But I think I've taken on some responsibilities and I've structured my week in a way where if I have time that's scheduled to not study. Um, so what that means is if I you know, have a friend that I haven't seen in a while, I'll schedule a time in to go hang out with them for a few hours. And once that's you know, in my schedule, then I can structure my studying around that. So I know that I'm going to be spending you know, half a day here or like a couple hours here doing something. Um, I know that I have to accommodate it for that, so I have to study a little bit more on this day and uh, make sure I get a little bit ahead so I don't fall behind. And I think... Planning ahead is, is the best idea also in, um, in undergrad or in, in PA school. And so my week, like if I have tutorial on Monday, um, say it's an evening tutorial, I'll go um, wake up, do some work for the, the tutorial, and then go to the gym maybe, and then go back, have you know, lunch, finish tutorial prep and then go to tutorial. So you know, it's, it's that one day, there's a lot of tutorial prep happening, a lot of studying happening, but that's also um, within there, there might be some email replies that I have to do or may I, maybe I have to work on my, um, uh, on the SOAP note that I, that's due the next day. So it kind of depends on the week, depends on um, what's happening and how many other responsibilities I have put into my to-do list um, that week. So. It's dependent on a lot of things, but um, there's a lot of studying happening, for sure. Mm -hmm.